It's not as difficult. See, so many things. You know, when I was a footballer, the worst part of being a footballer, because I was a nervous little fella then, um, was sitting in the dressing room before the game, because all the things that could go wrong were going wrong through your mind. And then when you get out in the field and you actually did it, oh, this is good, I'm enjoying this. It's like when you, you sit worrying about going to the dentist for like three weeks. And then you go in and they say, oh, nothing wrong, it's okay. Oh, that's good, I, I, that was brilliant. Eh, what do you mean it was brilliant? You, spent, you ruined your life for three weeks waiting for this. <laughs> Everything seems worse thinking about it. I'll tell you from experience, as, uh, speaking your truth, being your uniqueness is not as difficult as it seems if you disconnect from caring what other people think. That's the prison. That's the prison. Most people live in a prison of fearing what other people think. Therefore, they don't live their life. They live someone else's version of what they should be. Bugger that for a lark. Don't want to know, thank you. I am me. I am unique. And I celebrate everyone else uh, who's expressing their uniqueness. Even though I might not agree with it, so what? Doesn't matter. Their uniqueness, it's them. That's who they are. The more we celebrate uniqueness, the more we celebrate being conscious. As this great film, Dead Poet Society, Robin Williams, he said at one point, I stand upon my desk to remind myself that we must constantly look at things in a different way. You see, the world looks very different from up here. You don't believe me? Well, come and see for yourselves. And we have been manipulated to live lives that basically see life from the same point of observation. Because that's what the manipulators want, because then... If we do that, we're controllable. Once we start celebrating uniqueness and have infinite numbers of points of observation of the same thing, suddenly the, there's too many points of difference, too many points of uh, uniqueness and diversity, and you can't control that from a central point. When we open to consciousness, everything seems different because we become different, and we lose these prisons like fear and insecurity, and the auric field opens, the mind opens to consciousness, and we start to live a life that is the real us and not the fake us that we have lived up to this point. One of the great things is clearing our minds of the clutter. Always going on clearing the minds of the clutter. When I'm about um, two years ago now, when I was going through this, started this big kind of awakening within myself, like another level, um, I had this overwhelming feeling for months just to throw everything out. I only live in a little flat because I want to and I like it and it it's just suits me, but it was still full of rubbish um, in, in you know, closets and bloody things, places you do. You don't believe the number of things you kind of accumulate. And... What I was going through was an inner clearing of everything out. What really matters to me? What is, what is relevant? And so much isn't. Doesn't matter. We, we hold things on within ourselves that don't matter and we get stressed about them. And what I did as this was happening to me, I, I realized after a while that my sudden obsession, which lasted about a month or so, of, I was going to the bloody recycling tip day after day after day. They're saying, it's you again. Yeah, more stuff, more stuff. And I got down in my flat to only, not minimalism, but virtually there. And I cleared all these things. Oh, I'll keep that. I might need it. Well, I never use it. Get rid of it. And then I went, after that kind of... I, stop because I had nothing else to throw out. I, I went through a process and you know, I'm, I'm quite a clean fella but I'm not obsessed with it. And, but I wanted to clean everything. Cleaning everything constantly. And what I realized that what I was doing is I was externalizing what was happening within me. And it's, it was such a wonderful experience to clear out external expression of it but the inner clutter to start to realize what really matters. And you start to realize it so much that winds us up and diverts us and pulls us into mind and stress doesn't matter you know i have this thing now i say to people if you were on your deathbed and had 10 minutes to live would what's stressing you now matter well no well the great trick is bring that here into the now and don't let it matter now oh well what she said about me it was disgusting 
doesn't matter. She'll say something else tomorrow. What does it matter? How dare you say this about me? All, and, and oh, it's terrible what they're doing. And all this stuff, it doesn't matter. All it matters is we are consciousness having an experience. And we know that we're consciousness having an experience. What does it matter? Does what, you know, Ethel say about me matter to consciousness? Oh, I'm, I'm all that is, has been and ever will be. And I'm really hurt at what you've just said. <laughs> I mean, please, mind cares. Because mind is the village idiot compared with consciousness in the state that mind has, has, has de uh, descended into. And taking responsibility is taking power back. You know, so often we, we want to externalize things that are happening in our, in our lives to other people. You know, you know why I'm in this state? It's what that woman did to me in 1963. I've never forgotten. Still, it's all your fault. You're the reason I'm in this state. And then you realize that actually we are expressing um, an energetic vibrational version of us all the time. It's called vibes. And if we could get into a real deep level of it, we'd realize what I call this magnetic attraction is actually creating our reality all the time. The manipulators know that. If they can bring you into certain states of being, certain states of stress, certain states of fear, they know that by doing that, you are going to generate the vibrational frequency of those emotional states and you are going to draw other um, uh, sinking energies, other stressful, fearful emotional states towards you. And therefore, they are actually creating your reality by manipulating your state of being. They know how this works. And if we take responsibility, as Carl Jung said, people will do anything, no matter how absurd, in order to avoid facing their own soul. However absurd, to avoid facing their own responsibility. And people um, just, just need to realize, as we all do, that by taking responsibility for what happens to us is taking our power back. Because if we're saying someone else is responsible for what is happening to us, we are saying we are not in control of our lives, we are not in control of our reality, some external force is. And it will be if that's the way we see it. But if we say, I am responsible for what I am creating, what is it about me that's pulling this in. Why does this pain in the ass come into my uh, life and not into his? What is it? You take responsibility and what you're saying is, I have the power to control my reality. I've just got to take responsibility for what's happening and then realize why it's happening. And, and with that realization, the vibrational uh, frequency I'm uh, broadcasting changes and we stop um, pulling that kind of thing into our lives anymore. We changed our reality. I mean, many people in this room will know that when you go through a change of uh, uh, state of consciousness, state of awareness, state of perception, then many people go out of your life that were in before and other people come in. Changes happen in your life. Some of it you don't like, but what it is, it's just the old uh, uh, life created by the old energy field, created from the old perception, breaking down so another one can come in. And, and it happens because when we change, our energy changes, and therefore what it attracts changes our experienced uh, reality within the decoded holographic world changes because we are in control if only we realize that and take it back and so instead of blaming everyone else because while we are fighting among ourselves and blaming everyone else for what's happening to us it's just an individual reflection or expression of the energy that leads to wars on a collective level and it's interesting you know when you, when you start to change 
your perception and you want to be spiritual, as they say. What kind of goes on in your mind is when I'm now I, now I want to be spiritual, everything's going to change and I'm going to go down leafy lanes with little nymphs and butterflies are going to drop on my arm and it's going to be lovely because I'm spiritual now. And what happens? All hell often breaks loose in your life. It bloody well did in mine. And what happens then is we think if this is spirituality, two years into this journey of mine, conscious journey, I thought if this is spirituality, you can stick it. This is no fun. Um, because everything in my life broke down. But when we start to understand what's happening in the way that I'm talking about now, if we understand what's happening, then the pain of that breakdown can be very, very much diminished. Because what we're putting out before the change is in our vibrational fields that attract certain vibrational fields back, which we call a life, people, places, ways of life, experiences. When we, when we change and shift our consciousness, there is that transitional point where the old construct, vibrational construct, starts to break down so the new one can come in. And if the old one doesn't break down, the new one can't come in. And at that time, we experience it as all hell's breaking loose in our lives. But what's actually happening is the old is crumbling so the new can be. I never stick around that long enough to make it. I apologize that once again I'm not in love. But it's as not as if I'm mine at your heart and exactly breaking. It's just a thought, only a thought. But it's my life. love to live by the sea To travel the world alone and live more simply I have no idea what's happened to that dream As there's really nothing left here to stop me It's just a doubt Only a doubt That if my life Nothing I have is truly mine. Cause nothing I have is truly mine.